let's get on to the reviews. Today, we are reviewing Pusha T on his latest work, Daytona. To provide a little bit of historical context, for those that don't know who Pusha T is, he used to be part of the clips with his brother Malice. Uh, they were known mainly for, mainly for grinding as well as what happened to that boy. They pretty much ran hip hop from the time of 2000, I would say, until 2006. Then they started dying off a little bit and then they disbanded. The brother uh, Malice, who is the brother of Pusha, caught a little bit of crisis of faith. He got into his faith a lot, lot more and he quit. So it was now left on Pusha to either quit as well or continue. We know what he did because we're here now talking about his review. We're here now talking about his album. I do have a little bit of conversation to make. This is the first time I've actually listened to a Pusha T solo project. Do not hate me. Do not hate me. The one thing I do admire about Pusha, even though I prefer his brother's ability over his when they were part, um, when they were together um, as the clips, it was the fact that he's actually been able to move with the times. And when I say move with the times, I mean I've noticed a lot of artists that came up in the 90s era and they pretty much haven't evolved their sound to fit the demographic that they're trying to target. So when it came, but, but when it comes to Pusha, his sound has actually changed and evolved over the years. But his message is consistently the same. He's still, he is still the best lyricist there is. He still talks about drug, um, drug pushing and pretty much his demographic knows what to expect from him and they know that he's gonna switch it up every single time. That's what I respect about the guy. There's also not another fact that you should know about Pusha T. He's also the president of Good Music, which is with Kanye West, Kid Cudi, uh, and many more artists that are signed on. Oh, Te Tiana Taylor. I nearly forgot her. Not, not quite. But yeah, these artists are signed to the to, um, to the label, and they were all doing the Good Music rollout. Kanye had this crazy idea that everyone on, on the label should do seven tracks, except for Tiana Taylor. She done eight because she's special. I'm so special. Everyone done seven tracks. Nas released his latest album, Nazir, through the um through the label as well, doing seven tracks. So going into this album, I did not know what to expect. All I was thinking of in my head was what are you gonna say and how are you gonna deliver it? This is all I was thinking of. And we're gonna dive dive into the review so that you can know what I think of this album. This album caused a lot of controversy. If you are been in hip hop, I've been following hip hop as much as I have. You would know about the Drake and Pusha T beef that, that they've been going at each other. This was the album that started the whole thing. That's right. The track Infrared was the one that pretty much got Drake in his feelings. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? That wasn't the only controversy. The, also, the album artwork was a lot more controversial considering that Kanye West made a last minute alteration and bought the picture um bought the picture of winnie houston's bathroom which which as we know of winnie houston's drug history she crack is whack so to analyze actually stop that stop that one the only aspects of this album was actually uncanny i mean for you to be able to fit a lot of content in fact in seven tracks hats off to you the first track if you know you know pretty much set the tone for the for, for the entire album there's a lot of lyrical bombs in there, a lot of um, intricate wordplay, imagery of the of of the of the highest order. In in fact, you need to listen to this album more than once. When I say more than once, I mean at least ten times with a dictionary and with a uh, and with someone from the streets that can able to to translate to you the nuances. That was the drawback of this album. It wasn't well translated in my opinion. The storytelling was really good, but I really had to be aware of the drug references, um, be aware of the street lingo, as well as the big words that he was trying to use. I, 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 I literally could not, um, I literally could not really enjoy and get into the album until the third listen. This was when the, the messages started, started resonating and I was like, oh, and when I had this oh moment, 
that's when I actually really appreciated the album. The story is setting side, and I gave it a 7.5 out of 8. It made me, it made me sort of dive in to like, oh wait a minute, who am I like really, really dealing with here? Like, who content and skill this album? I was very impressed. It was literally rich in content. It was very free. And as he said in his interviews, I could actually understand what he meant was he had the luxury of time and that's why he called it Daytona. I can see why because he really he really came into his on his own. I actually felt he was actually having fun in every single track that he was doing. And when I finished the album, it left me wanting more. I had a lot of oh moments in this album and I was like, oh I suffer from short-term memory loss. I got what he was trying to say. I got the um I got it connected one track to another. It can um and these moments are priceless when you're listening to an when you listen to an album. I gave it a six out of seven for low content. It was that good, it was brilliant in fact. Surgical summer with it. Snip snip snip. Flow and the style, the album flowed effortlessly. It was actually like a DJ mix. <laughs> When I say DJ mix, I mean it was sonically perfect, like uh, sonically perfect in terms of the flow. Uh, it 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 also made sense um, story wise as well. It was well structured. Pusha knew what he was doing from the first track. We knew what direction he was heading into, which I can which I can I can understand why there was a lot of jargon in here. You know, it, um, why I can understand there was a lot of intricate wordplay because if you know, you know, would be in the first track. It was quite rich in um, it was quite rich in lyrics. Just a sampling in this album, I love that style. It actually suited Pusha T's flow, and pretty much suited the um, the message that he was trying to send. From Combat Baby to Santeria to Com to What Would Meek Do and to Infrared, it really drove the idea that he wants to really capture you now. This is the end of the album, but you don't feel like it's the end. You actually feel like the story just begun, and. After listening to these last last four tracks, you want to go back to the start and listen again because it really, like I said, it really picks up, and you don't want it to end. And I'm, it's no, it's it's of no surprise why a lot of fans were actually calling for Pusha to actually release his, his full length King Push album, which he promised um, earlier um, uh, two years ago, which he promised that he was going to release. His instrumentation, the beat selection was really on point. I gotta give props to Kanye. He produced every track on the Good Music rollout. Yeah, um, I, for, I, I did forget to mention. I did forget to mention that earlier. I do apologize. But yes, Kanye West produced every single track on the Good Music rollout. So on this album, Pusha really knew how to pick beats. He, every beat that he picked resonated with his voice brilliantly. The use of sampling in this album was incredible, in my opinion. It really brought out the best out of Pusha, in my opinion. The instrumentation on this work was really on point. Kanye really knew what he was doing on this album and and I, and I personally believe that's down to Pusha and the fact that Pusha knew where he wanted to go and Pusha knew exactly what message he was trying, was trying to lay across which made the producer's job a lot easier. I can't fault the instrumentation on this album at all. I gave it a 4.1 and once you hear it, the beats were fire. They were, um, it blended sonic, it, it blended beautifully, and it really fit his voice. I, I think when, I think when you have a combination like that, you're on to a winner. At the overall score, Pusha T, and it was 86%. This album really set the example of what artistry is supposed to be. I thoroughly enjoyed the experience, and in fact, I. I really listen to this album again and again. I um I sometimes switch the order around. The message remains the same. I sometimes I sometimes start from inside starting with if you know you know. I start from comeback baby, and the album is still just as good and it still goes full circle. So I I can't fault it. I can't I can't fault it. You would really enjoy this album the more and more the more you listen to it. And like I said at the start. I've listened to it at least 20 times. In my opinion, the album is the best project out of the whole good music world. Like, yes, yes, that's right, I said it. It's better than all this project, in my, which in my opinion, I felt it was quite underwhelming, but that's, uh, that's for another review.
All righty now. Look what, hey man, we doing this too much now. More history.